Hey, welcome to Storytellers Connection. I'm your host, Bright Hawk. Everyone loves a good love story. So, well, here's my love story. And Act One begins with I don't need a relationship. That's just going to pull me away from my destiny. It, relationships just complicate things. I'm done with relationship. Because the truth is, I spent the better part of my 30s, 10 years, in a relationship that, well, you know, it probably went on longer than it should have, and it didn't end well when you need a restraining order to move on safely. You know it didn't end well when you're in tens of thousands of dollars of debt and it's taken years to repay. You know it didn't end well when you're pretty sure you're never doing this again. That's where I was. So by the time I broke into my 40s, I was ready for freedom. I was ready for travel. I was ready to heal. It was my version of eat, pray, love, except my version was drum, pray, love. And I loved having an ever-expanding community around the world. And I was feeling very happy with my life. And I was performing. And I was performing at a rather otherworldly event known as New York Fairy Festival. <laughs> what a blast. What an incredible, magical, otherworldly kind of thing. And I had many roles, storyteller, handpan player, and at the end of every day, drummer. Drummer for the royal court of the fairy queen, all matter of manner of magical creatures, fairies, pixies, goblins, trolls, you name it. Oh my goodness. And it was a blast. And I would help lead the procession at the end of the day with the fairy queen all the way out through the fairy festival. And it was during this procession that Cupid's arrow hit. Not me. (laughs) It didn't hit me. It hit a tree nymph with a snake slung on their shoulders named Hollis. And I'm told I did something I rarely do. I dropped a beat. There was a ripple in the field, and I didn't really realize what had happened. Later, there was an after party, and a steampunk-themed after party. I was on my way to the dance floor, and I turned, and there was Hollis with the snake. And so, of course, I said, nice snake. And they immediately offered me this beautiful python. You want to dance with Jake the snake? And I immediately accepted. Sure. And Jake the Snake and I had quite a number of dances. What an intro, right? Jake the Snake. So, of course, after a number of dances, I went back to Hollis and said, here's your snake. And, of course, a conversation ensued. I found out that Hollis was indeed more than just a snake handler. And when I found out that one of Hollis's talents was that of a healer, I said, well, I've created a CD of music that's really to support people's healing journey. If you ever need it in your work, here it is. And I didn't really think of much more of it. And on to the next event, on to the next journey. And we became Facebook friends and then started texting. And as the end of the year approached, so did my birthday, winter solstice, a bright light born on a dark night. And Hollis made a generous offer, wanting to gift me an astrology reading of my natal chart. And I thought, wow, that's that's pretty awesome. And I also thought, somebody does your astrology chart, they will have the goods on you. And so I hesitated for a second. I thought, well, I live in Colorado, you live in Pennsylvania. Uh, We kind of run in different circles. We only see each other at this fairy festival thing. Yeah, yeah. And then some part of me, a little voice and said, said, hey, you might learn something. So, of course, I agreed. 
And in fact, I did. I learned a great deal about myself through my astrology chart, and I was very grateful. And by the time the year rolled around to the New York Fairy Festival again, we had become friends, and I also made it very clear I only want to be friends. Hollis and I had a curious relationship where both of us were wondering, Hollis was having a love at first sight experience and wondering, why can't I stop thinking about this person? And I was having a, why can't this person stop thinking about me? Are you a stalker? Are you a super fan? What's going on here? Why are you so into me? But we were becoming good friends and we realized that we had shared values and interests, even though we had very different backgrounds. And so when New York Fairy Festival came around, Hollis had a proposition. They had been using my music in the nursing home they worked at, and it was having an amazing effect. The seniors, the elders who had Alzheimer's and dementia, sometimes they would get agitated. Hollis put my music on the CD that I'd given them, they got calm, and they got happier and peaceful. And so Hollis kept wondering what would happen if I had the musician in the room. And I had one of those experiences where everything slowed down and sped up at the same time. Suddenly, I realized I had an opportunity to do something because Hollis knew I had been laid off from a 16-year career in telecommunications. I really did not know what my next move was going to be. And so the idea of getting to play music as my work, and of course, I needed to understand going to Pennsylvania for a month. How are we going to get these bookings? And Hollis assured me they had it figured out. And the plan really was very simple. And as soon as I arrived, and we started doing programs, an amazing thing was happening. Between the two of us, each of us doing our own thing, me playing music, Hollis interacting with the elders, the whole room transformed. By the second program, we both knew we had something special, something nobody else was doing, and we were having amazing results. And you had to wonder what might happen if we went further. Something was happening, and something was happening inside of me, too. I started wondering, why was I keeping Hollis at arm's length? What was I so afraid of? Hey, I might even have some fun. And suddenly, I revealed to Hollis that my posture was changing that my view of things might be different now. And they were so cute and so cool. Even as the blush rose up their cheeks, the kind you can't hide. And we soon realized just exactly how powerful we could be together. That the more we created together, and Let's Dance was a great example, in the time that we had before the COVID pandemic shut us down, we literally did over 500 programs in 30 states. We realized anything we did together, including this broadcast, was better together. We also both realized that doing the work that we needed to do on ourselves, on loving who we were, just as we were, open the door, the door that I was so afraid to open again, open the door to real love and partnership. So my friends, what's really important is that you create the life you love and love the life you live. And when you're able to create love that is greater than the sum of your parts, when you are able to have love that makes you better because you're together, makes everything better because you're together, you have found true love. You have found great love. So I wish for you 
to be all you can be and to be the love you want to see in the world. The first thing I do when I'm creating a story is, number one, make sure it's your story to tell. Make sure you have earned the right to tell the story. And if it's your story, you're the expert. The next thing I do is I make sure that I think from the end and I ask myself what's important. And what I wrote down is what's important is that you live the life you love and love the life you live. That doesn't mean mean anything about being in partnership. That means about being in love with yourself and your life. That's what's important. So to me, knowing what's important tells me where I know I want to end, which tells me how I want to begin. And that very quickly structures it in my brain. And then it becomes a very simple, what's act one, act two, act three. And act one, of course, is how we are going to be transformed by the time we get to act three. And so it was very easy for me to be in the place of act one is I was very clear. I was not going to get in relationship again. I'm done. So the contrast to that to where I am now. That's a very easy act one, act two, act three way to structure your story. Know how you're going to end. And ask yourself repeatedly what is important. And you'll know how to structure your story just like that. Thanks so much for joining us for Storytellers Connection, where I always try to share some tips and tricks to help all of us be better storytellers. I look forward to having you join us for Storytellers Connection online event where you can tell your story and we all listen to each other. Thursday, February 25th. Thursday, February 25th. Join us and register at brighthawkproductions.com. Brighthawkproductions.com. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure to announce that we have a new program for the little ones in our lives. If you have young ones that are K to four, we have a program called Storytime Yoga. Storytime Yoga, midday on Wednesdays. And you can join me, Bright Hawk. I'll be telling the story and providing the music. And Hollis will be providing the movement and the yoga for the little ones. It's been so much fun. You can learn more at brighthawkproductions.com. My book, The Dancing Hippo, is available on my website at brighthawkproductions.com. We are about to have more books and we are happy to be sending them out. It's so much fun to be sharing this beautiful picture book illustrated by Amanda Moore, story by me. And if you want to hear me telling this story, you can order it at brighthawkproductions.com. There is an ebook, an enhanced ebook that is so much fun with videos, sound effects, stories, and songs, and of course, all the beautiful artwork in the book. It's best if you have both. Storytellers who want some assistance, I am often asked, how do I do what you do? Please feel free to contact me through my website. I offer coaching and training at brighthawkproductions.com. Thank you for your likes. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for commenting. We really appreciate you. Thank you.